Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 1 of software engineering course. I will be using I and Somerville 9th edition uh, lecture slides and uh, I won't be mostly don't touch uh, their slides. So in this course, what we are going to uh, learn is Professional software development, what is meant by software engineering? So, what truly means software engineering? Is it just about knowing how to program, knowing coding? Is it just about being a coder, being a web designer? No. Software engineering means much more than just a being a programmer. We will learn that. What we are going to learn in this course will help you tremendously in your professional life, especially if you work with a, a professional big company, a corporate corporation, a corporate company. Believe me, you will uh, you will have a great easiness if you take this course to seriously and learn what uh, is taught in this lesson. Software Engineering Ethics A Brief Introduction to Ethical Issues That Affect Software Engineering Case Studies An Introduction to Three Examples That Are Used in Later Chapters in the Book Okay, Case Studies is not that important. Okay, so Software Engineering The economies of all developed nations are dependent on software. More and more systems are software controlled. Software engineering is concerned with theories, methods and tools for professional software development. Expenditure on software represents a significant fraction of gross national product GNP in all developed countries. Yes, as you know that already just uh, the value of Facebook and Google probably is more than all of the companies in our country. So software is the future. Software costs often dominate computer system costs. The costs of software on a PC are often greater than the hardware cost. Software costs more to maintain than it does to develop. For systems with a long life, Maintenance costs may be several times development costs. Software engineering is concerned with cost-effective software development. This is also so true. After you uh, deliver it, your uh, software, maintenance of it sometimes may maybe usually costs more than the developing that software. Moreover, software almost always costs more than the hardware itself. Think about MS SQL Server. MS SQL license costs many times more than the hardware that it's running on. Software products. Generic products standalone systems that are marketed and sold to any customer who wishes to buy them. Examples, PC software such as graphics programs, project management tools, computer-aided design CAD software. Software for specific markets such as appointment systems for dentists. For example, Photoshop is a generic graphics program or uh, MS SQL Server, a generic database management program or a Windows 10, a generic operation system software. These are all generic products to sold millions of customers. Customized product software that is commissioned by a specific customer to meet their own needs. Examples, embedded control systems, air traffic control software, traffic monitoring systems. Customized products always costs more 
because you can't sell it to the many people thus you cannot uh, reduce price and so yes customized products always cost more product specification Generic products the specification of what the software should do is owned by the software developer and decisions on software change are made by the developer. Customized products. The specification of what the software should do is owned by the customer for the software and they make decisions on software changes that are required. Okay. Frequently asked questions about software engineering. What is software? Computer programs and associated documentation. Software products may be developed for a particular customer or may be developed for a general market. What are the attributes of good software? Good software should deliver the required functionality and performance to the user and should be maintainable, dependable and usable. What is software engineering? Software engineering is an engineering discipline that is concerned with all aspects of software production. Not just coding or not just doing the job. Okay. What are the fundamental software engineering activities? Software specification, software development, software validation and software evolution. What is the difference between software engineering and computer science? Computer science focuses on theory and fundamentals. Software engineering is concerned with the practicalities of developing and delivering useful software. So this is important. What is the difference between software and computer science? Let's uh, listen again. Computer science focuses on theory and fundamentals. Software engineering is concerned with the practicalities of developing and delivering useful software. So actually, software engineering is more useful in the daily life. When you get a job. Okay, so it's more focuses on the practical usage of software developing. Software development. What is the difference between software engineering and system engineering? System engineering is concerned with all aspects of computer-based systems development including hardware, software and process engineering. Software engineering is part of this more general process. Frequently asked questions about software engineering. Okay, more questions and answers. What are the key challenges facing software engineering? Coping with increasing diversity, demands for reduced delivery times and developing trustworthy software. What are the costs of software engineering? Roughly 60% of software costs are development costs, 40% are testing costs. For custom software, evolution costs often exceed development costs. What are the best software engineering techniques and methods? While all software projects have to be professionally managed and developed, different techniques are appropriate for different types of system. For example, games should always be developed using a series of prototypes whereas safety critical control systems require a complete and analyzable specification to be developed. You can't, therefore, say that one method is better than another. Yes, for games, you can open a uh, pre-beta, beta, and omega versions, or alpha versions, and the errors are not critical for games. However, if you are uh, developing a critical 
uh, software system let's say for example you are developing a software for MR devices that is running on uh, patients you can't have uh, not completed not truly testing software because it can it may be hazardous for life it may cost life or you are let's say developing a software for banks you can't have a uh, not completed software it may cost millions billions of dollars okay so methods differs for different type of software for games it is perfectly fine to open beta alpha versions and uh, lets the clients the users the gamers to find out bugs and you fix them so it changes What differences has the web made to software engineering? The web has led to the availability of software services and the possibility of developing highly distributed service-based systems. Web-based systems development has led to important advances in programming languages and software reuse. Definitely. For example, let's uh, uh, take into account that uh, code management systems such as GitHub. With GitHub, Tens of hundreds of thousands of developers can work around the world on the same software and contribute to the open source development. And there are uh, limitless uh, number of new opportunities uh, with the web. Essential attributes of good software. Maintainability software should be written in such a way so that it can evolve to meet the changing needs of customers. This is a critical attribute because software change is an inevitable requirement of a changing business environment. This is so true. Your software should be able to updatable, maintain, maintain ability, uh, maintainable. Dependability and security software dependability includes a range of characteristics including reliability, security and safety. Dependable software should not cause physical or economic damage in the event of system failure. Malicious users should not be able to access or damage the system. Yeah, uh, try to understand this because this is ex extremely important. Let's read again. Software dependability includes a range of characteristics including reliability, security and safety. Dependable software should not cause physical or economic damage in the event of system failure. Malicious users should not be able to access or damage the system. So in many cases your software has to be dependable so you need to be careful of all of this. Efficiency Software should not make wasteful use of system resources such as memory and processor cycles. Efficiency therefore includes responsiveness, processing time, memory utilization, etc. Uh, in most cases, let's say in client-based software, this is at the moment the least important factor. Because the hardware becomes much more powerful for uh, single user applications, Efficiency can always be improved after the delivery. And so I would say this is the least important one. Uh, dependability is the most important one. Maintainability is also second most important one. And acceptability. Software must be acceptable to the type of users for which it is designed. This means that it must be understandable usable and compatible with other systems that they use and this is the third important one yes uh, it must be easy to use it must have a good user interface or good documentation uh, this is also very uh, this is also important uh, but not important as as these two okay software engineering Software engineering is an engineering discipline that is concerned with all aspects of software production from the early stages of system specification through to maintaining the system after it has gone into use. 
So you see a software engineer thinks about all of the aspects, not just coding, not just developing, not just producing a software that does the thing, but don't think about the other aspects of development. We will see what does this mean with the future lessons. Engineering discipline. Using appropriate theories and methods to solve problems bearing in mind organizational and financial constraints. All aspects of software production. Not just technical process of development. Also project management and the development of tools, methods etc. to support software production. Yes. Importance of software engineering. More and more, individuals and society rely on advanced software systems. We need to be able to produce reliable and trustworthy systems economically and quickly. It is usually cheaper, in the long run, to use software engineering methods and techniques for software systems rather than just write the programs as if it was a personal programming project. For most types of system, the majority of costs are the costs of changing the software after it has gone into use. This is so true. I also experienced this myself for my uh, personal projects and uh, programs. Believe me, this is so true. So let's re read this again. It is usually cheaper, in the long run, to use software engineering methods and techniques for software systems rather than just write the programs as if it was a personal programming project. For most types of system, the majority of costs are the costs of changing the software after it has gone into use. This also separates a programmer, a coder from a software engineer. In this era, you have to be a software engineer to be wanted a uh, programmer not just a simple programmer or a coder it will make the difference software process activities software specification where customers and engineers define the software that is to be produced and the constraints on its operation software development where the software is designed and programmed software validation where the software is checked to ensure that it is what the customer requires. Software evolution, where the software is modified to reflect changing customer and market requirements. So, software engineering separates software into the four processes, into the four stages. Software specification, software development, software validation, and software evolution, as you can see. Okay. General issues that affect most software, heterogeneity, increasingly, systems are required to operate as distributed systems across networks that include different types of computer and mobile devices. Business and social change. Business and society are changing incredibly quickly as emerging economies develop and new technologies become available. They need to be able to change their existing software and to rapidly develop new software. Uh, security and trust. As software is intertwined with all aspects of our lives, it is essential that we can trust that software. Yes. Uh, software engineering diversity. There are many different types of software system and there is no universal set of software techniques that is applicable to all of these. The software engineering methods and tools used depend on the type of application being developed, the requirements of the customer and the background of the development team. Yes, uh, this is so true. Let's uh, read it again. This is important. The software engineering methods and tools used depend on the type of application being developed, the requirements of the customer and the background of the development team. So you have to be careful uh, about which type of software you are developing and choose the proper methods and tools for that uh, application type. Application types. 
Okay, standalone applications. These are application systems that run on a local computer, such as a PC. They include all necessary functionality and do not need to be connected to a network. Okay, interactive transaction based applications. Applications that execute on a remote computer and are accessed by users from their own PCs or terminals. These include web applications such as e commerce applications. And embedded control systems. These are software control systems that control and manage hardware devices. Numerically, there are probably more embedded systems than any other type of system. I would say currently, most of the applications are either interactive transaction based applications or uh, standalone applications that uh, accesses the remote computers to uh, execute the core functions such as online games and uh, server based applications uh, for example even to run photoshop on your computer even though it is a uh, standalone application, it has to connect its server and also it provides many features that you can uh, do with its remote servers. So it's a mix of both. Okay, application types, we continue. Embedded control systems, this is a rare area and uh, in Turkey it doesn't have much of application, uh, it, it doesn't have much. Uh, job opportunities but uh, if you get into a manufacturing factory of embedded control systems of course it is still mandatory application types batch processing systems these are business systems that are designed to process data in large batches they process large numbers of individual inputs to create corresponding outputs. Entertainment systems. These are systems that are primarily for personal use and which are intended to entertain the user. Systems for modeling and simulation. These are systems that are developed by scientists and engineers to model physical processes or situations which include many separate interacting objects okay uh, some more application types data collection systems these are systems that collect data from their environment using a set of sensors and send that data to other systems for processing and uh, systems of systems these are systems that are composed of a number of other software systems Okay, software engineering fundamentals. This is really important. Some fundamental principles apply to all types of software system, irrespective of the development techniques used. Okay, let's read them. Systems should be developed using a managed and understood development process. Of course, different processes are used for different types of software. Dependability and performance are important for all types of system. Understanding and managing the software specification and requirements, what the software should do, are important. Where appropriate, you should reuse software that has already been developed rather than write new software. This is a core concept for being useful in software development. You should reuse software, especially open source software uh, that is checked and validated many times by many other users not not try to invent the wheel again and again okay this will make your software more dependable better more robust more effective more efficient and will save your a lot of time software engineering and the web The web is now a platform for running application and organizations are increasingly developing web-based systems rather than local systems. Web services, discussed in Chapter 19, allow application functionality to be accessed over the web. 
Cloud computing is an approach to the provision of computer services where applications run remotely on the cloud. Users do not buy software by pay according to use. Yes, this is the most uh, commonly used service type at the moment. For example, for reading this text to speech, I am using premium service of Google Cloud, Google Cloud text to speech API. I have subscribed to them. It is normally paid but they give you some free credits currently i am using free credits so this is the future of uh, the software uh, and uh, development cloud computing web services also very similar to cloud computing uh, so we can say the future is the web web software engineering we continue Software reuse is the dominant approach for constructing web-based systems. When building these systems, you think about how you can assemble them from pre-existing software components and systems. Actually, this is not the dominant approach for only web-based, but all systems. Because it is extremely hard to, in today's world to build something from scratch. In, in today's world, Softwares are so advanced, so attractive, so uh, complex, so that it is very, very hard to develop from scratch. It, they are usually uh, composed from existing frameworks, existing libraries, uh, as uh, and uh, utilizing, utilizing what is already there. Is very important. Web based systems should be developed and delivered incrementally. It is now generally recognized that it is impractical to specify all the requirements for such systems in advance. Yes, you constantly update your web service or web system, it is easy to update also. User interfaces are constrained by the capabilities of web browsers. Technologies such as Ajax allow rich interfaces to be created within a web browser but are still difficult to use. Web forms with local scripting are more commonly used. Actually, uh, this is pretty much changing with the recent uh, advances in uh, asynchronous programming technologies. Web-based software engineering, okay, we continue. Web-based systems are complex distributed systems, but the fundamental principles of software engineering discussed previously are as applicable to them as they are to any other types of system. The fundamental ideas of software engineering, discussed in the previous section, apply to web-based software in the same way that they apply to other types of software system. Yeah, this is... This is true. Key points. Okay. Software engineering is an engineering discipline that is concerned with all aspects of software production. Essential software product attributes are maintainability, dependability and security, efficiency and acceptability. The high level activities of specification, development, validation and evolution are part of all software processes. The fundamental notions of software engineering are universally applicable to all types of system development. Okay, all these key points are so true. Let's read them again. Software engineering is an engineering discipline that is concerned with all aspects of software production. Essential software product attributes are maintainability, dependability and security, efficiency and acceptability. The high-level activities of specification, development, validation and evolution are part of all software processes. The fundamental notions of software engineering are universally applicable to all types of system development. Okay, two more key points. There are many different types of system and each requires appropriate software engineering tools and techniques for their development. The fundamental ideas of software engineering are applicable to all types of software system. Okay, let's uh, read again. To... There are many different types of system and each requires appropriate software engineering tools and techniques for their development. 
The fundamental ideas of software engineering are applicable to all types of software system. Okay, uh, let's continue to lecture two. Okay, so this is lecture two of the slides, but we are in still lecture one of our courses. Our course. Okay, software engineering ethics. Software engineering ethics. Let's read them. Software engineering involves wider responsibilities than simply the application of technical skills. Software engineers must behave in an honest and ethically responsible way if they are to be respected as professionals. Ethical behavior is more than simply upholding the law but involves following a set of principles that are morally correct. Uh, we, we already have to abide the law. However, to be ethical software developer, we have to follow the principles that are morally correct. Okay. Issues of professional responsibility. First, confidentiality. Okay. Engineers should normally respect the confidentiality of their employers or clients irrespective of whether or not a formal confidentiality agreement has been signed. Okay, competence. Engineers should not misrepresent their level of competence. They should not knowingly accept work which is out with their competence. Okay. Intellectual property rights. Engineers should be aware of local laws governing the use of intellectual property such as patents, copyright, etc. They should be careful to ensure that the intellectual property of employers and clients is protected. Computer misuse Software engineers should not use their technical skills to misuse other people's computers. Computer misuse ranges from relatively trivial game playing on an employer's machine say to extremely serious dissemination of viruses okay acm association for computing machinery i triple e institute of electrical and electronics engineers code of ethics okay the professional societies in the u.s have cooperated to produce a code of ethical practice Members of these organizations sign up to the code of practice when they join. The code contains eight principles related to the behavior of and decisions made by professional software engineers, including practitioners, educators, managers, supervisors and policy makers, as well as trainees and students of the profession. Okay, let's see the code of ethics. Rationale for the code of ethics. Computers have a central and growing role in commerce, industry, government, medicine, education, entertainment and society at large. Software engineers are those who contribute by direct participation or by teaching, to the analysis, specification, design, development, certification, maintenance and testing of software systems. Because of their roles in developing software systems, Software engineers have significant opportunities to do good or cause harm, to enable others to do good or cause harm, or to influence others to do good or cause harm. To ensure, as much as possible, that their efforts will be used for good, software engineers must commit themselves to making software engineering a beneficial and respected profession. Okay. <clears throat> The ACM IEEE Code of Ethics Software Engineering Code of Ethics and Professional Practice ACM IEEE CS Joint Task Force on Software Engineering Ethics and Professional Practices Preamble The short version of the code summarizes aspirations at a high level of the abstraction, 
The clauses that are included in the full version give examples and details of how these aspirations change the way we act as software engineering professionals. Without the aspirations, the details can become legalistic and tedious. Without the details, the aspirations can become high sounding but empty. Together, the aspirations and the details form a cohesive code. Software engineers shall commit themselves to making the analysis, specification, design, development, testing and maintenance of software a beneficial and respected profession. In accordance with their commitment to the health, safety and welfare of the public, software engineers shall adhere to the following eight principles. Okay, so... Okay. <clears throat> okay, so ethical principles. Let's see the eight uh, code. One, public software engineers shall act consistently with the public interest. Two, client and employer. Software engineers shall act in a manner that is in the best interests of their client and employer consistent with the public interest. 3. Product. Software engineers shall ensure that their products and related modifications meet the highest professional standards possible. 4. Judgment. Software engineers shall maintain integrity and independence in their professional judgment. 5. Management. Software engineering managers and leaders shall subscribe to and promote an ethical approach to the management of software development and maintenance. 6. Profession. Software engineers shall advance the integrity and reputation of the profession consistent with the public interest. 7. Colleagues. Software engineers shall be fair to and supportive of their colleagues. 8. Self. Software engineers shall participate in lifelong learning regarding the practice of their profession and shall promote an ethical approach to the practice of the profession. Okay, so if you follow these ethical principles, you become a self-respected, uh, an example software engineer. Ethical dilemmas, okay. So... Okay. Disagreement in principle with the policies of senior management. Your employer acts in an unethical way and releases a safety critical system without finishing the testing of the system. Participation in the development of military weapon systems or nuclear systems. So these are the dilemmas for uh, software engineers and hard to choose what to do in such cases. Case studies, okay, okay, case studies of uh, some system development. A personal insulin pump. We will see them with details in An features. embedded system in an insulin pump used by diabetics to maintain blood glucose control. A mental health case patient management system. A system used to maintain records of people receiving care for mental health problems. A wilderness weather station. A data collection system that collects data about weather conditions in remote areas. Okay, there are three rather uh, different systems and let's see about them. Insulin pump control system. Collects data from a blood sugar sensor and calculates the amount of insulin required to be injected. Calculation based on the rate of change of blood sugar levels. Sends signals to a micro pump to deliver the correct dose of insulin. Safety critical system as low blood sugars can lead to brain malfunctioning, 
coma and death, high blood sugar levels have long-term consequences such as eye and kidney damage. So this system is a critical safety system, safety critical system, and the software engineer has to be extremely cautious with this system before releasing it. Uh, as you can see, first the description of the system is made and let's continue uh, so the insulin pump hardware architecture architecture is designed and planned uh, there is insulin reservoir needle assembly sensor pump controller clock alarm and displays this is the basic uh, architecture of the hardware activity model of the insulin pump a software engineer prepares all of these before even starting to code. This is what the, what makes what differs a software engineer from a, a simple programmer or a coder. We will have more ideas about this in the future lessons, future lectures. Okay. So the activity model of the insulin pump, uh, blood sensor, uh, analyze sensor reading. So analyze sensor gets the data from blood sensor and reads it, then calculates blood sugar, compute the uh, needed insulin amount, uh, and then decide the insulin dose, and then send the dose to the uh, compute pump commands, pump data. Uh, so the pumping command is sent to the control insulin pump. Insulin is pumped into the blood. Uh, and what those is uh, used and all other related data is logged. Then it computes the insulin again to decide uh, whether insulin was enough or not. Okay, essential high level requirements. The system shall be available to deliver insulin when required. The system shall perform reliably and deliver the correct amount of insulin to counteract the current level of blood sugar. The system must therefore be designed and implemented to ensure that the system always meets these requirements. Okay, so this was a uh, safety critical uh, system, uh, quick design. A patient information system for mental health care. Okay, let's see. A patient information system to support mental health care as a medical information system that maintains information about patients suffering from mental health problems and the treatments that they have received. Most mental health patients do not require dedicated hospital treatment but need to attend specialist clinics regularly where they can meet a doctor who has detailed knowledge of their problems. To make it easier for patients to attend, these clinics are not just run in hospitals. They may also be held in local medical practices or community centers. Okay, so MHC M -H -C PMS, uh, it is the mental health care patient management system. MHC PMS. Okay. The MHC PMS, Mental Health Care Patient Management System, is an information system that is intended for use in clinics. It makes use of a centralized database of patient information but has also been designed to run on a PC, so that it may be accessed and used from sites that do not have secure network connectivity. When the local systems have secure network access, they use patient information in the database but they can download and use local copies of patient records when they are disconnected. So this is kind of a mixed system that works both online and offline. So what are the goals of this system? To generate management information that allows health service managers to assess performance against local and government targets. To provide medical staff with timely information to support the treatment of patients. So it has two main goals. The organization of the MHCPMS. It has a local uh, databases, as you can see, it is a main server and it has a patient database. So you see, they both exchange data.
between them. This is the main organization. Key features, individual care management. Clinicians can create records for patients, edit the information in the system, view patient history, etc. The system supports data summaries so that doctors can quickly learn about the key problems and treatments that have been prescribed. Patient monitoring. The system monitors the records of patients that are involved in treatment and issues warnings if possible problems are detected. And administrative reporting. The system generates monthly management reports showing the number of patients treated at each clinic, the number of patients who have entered and left the care system, number of patients sectioned, the drugs prescribed and their costs, etc. You see this administrative reporting is all about statistical data and it can tremendously help administrative administrators uh, of the system to improve efficiency. Okay, so what concerns there are? This is not a safety critical system, however, it still has some concerns. Uh, first one is privacy. It is essential that patient information is confidential and is never disclosed to anyone apart from authorized medical staff and the patient themselves. Usually, this is the most uh, common problem in such systems. It's also, it also exists in e-commerce systems or in other systems. Privacy is not that much uh, taken into the account and safety. Some mental illnesses cause patients to become suicidal or a danger to other people. Wherever possible, the system should warn medical staff about potentially suicidal or dangerous patients. The system must be available when needed otherwise safety may be compromised and it may be impossible to prescribe the correct medication to patients. Okay, and the third example system is Wilderness Weather Station. The government of a country with large areas of wilderness decides to deploy several hundred weather stations in remote areas. Weather stations collect data from a set of instruments that measure temperature and pressure, sunshine, rainfall, wind speed and wind direction. The weather station includes a number of instruments that measure weather parameters such as the wind speed and direction, the ground and air temperatures, the barometric pressure and the rainfall over a 24-hour period. Each of these instruments is controlled by a software system that takes parameter readings periodically and manages the data collected from the instruments. Uh, these instruments are also sensors uh, of the station. The weather station's environment. So the weather station is put on a very remote area where there may not be an internet connection for a long time or electric for a long time. So, system weather station, system station maintenance, and system data management and archiving is the main environment. Weather information system, the weather station system is, this is the system design. This is responsible for collecting weather data, carrying out some initial data processing and transmitting it to the data management system. The data management and, archi and archiving system, so it is composed of three systems. This system collects the data from all of the wilderness weather stations, carries out data processing and analysis and archives the data. So the system maintenance system, the station maintenance system. This system can communicate by satellite with all wilderness weather stations to monitor the health of these systems and provide reports of problems. And additional software functional fun Functionality. How is this written? Functionality. Okay, functionality. Monitor the instruments, power and communication hardware and report faults to the management system. Manage the system power, ensuring that batteries are charged whenever the environmental conditions permit but also that generators are shut down in potentially damaging weather conditions, such as high wind. 
support dynamic reconfiguration where parts of the software are replaced with new versions and where backup instruments are switched into the system in the event of system failure. So you see there are many other uh, key issues that a software engineer has to take into consideration. It is not just about uh, starting and running a um, data collector station. There are many other issues always in uh, uh, such projects, in big projects, and you have to consider all of them, plan all of them before even starting coding. So key points so far. Software engineers have responsibilities to the engineering profession and society. They should not simply be concerned with technical issues. Professional societies publish codes of conduct which set out the standards of behavior expected of their members. Three case studies are used in the book. An embedded insulin pump control system, a system for mental health care patient management, a wilderness weather station. And we will have more detailed uh, explanations or uh, examples about these systems in the future lectures. And... Okay, so I am finishing the first lecture here. Uh, let me upload them to our GitHub repository. And uh, I will be uh, Posting more information about the lecture on the LMS system of the school. You should also learn how to use a code management system such as GitHub and a software to use this code management system such as Gitbash. I am using Gitbash to um, upload or synchronize my data with the remote repository definitely learn how to use github or and gitbash it will be extremely useful useful in your professional job almost every professional company now uses as such uh, code management repository so whatever you learn in this course will help you in your professional life. This course is not about developing your skills in coding or programming. This, co this course is about improving your group working skills, improving your uh, professional uh, viewpoints, uh, your professional uh, life in future and Believe me, uh, this is the truth, and hopefully see you next week, stay safe, stay, uh, uh, from, stay away from crowded places until COVID-19 uh, pandemic ends, alright, see you later hopefully.